The death of a baboon on the loose in northern Taiwan causes outrage. A hunter says he was given permission to shoot it. A bitter end to 82 years of friendship. Taiwan is ordered to pack up and leave its embassy in Honduras within 30 days. Taiwan's young people get a mental health checkup. Plus, we're in Lithuania to find out how warming ties with Taiwan are changing attitudes on the ground. A warm welcome to Taiwan Plus News. I'm Ian Kavat. The killing of a baboon in northern Taiwan has sparked a public uproar. A hunter has come forward saying he had permission to shoot the animal from officials. But as John Van Trias reports, the circumstances of the baboon's death are still unclear. <laughs> Weeks after becoming a local media celebrity, a runaway baboon in northern Taiwan has died. From its first sighting on March 10th, the animal has been making headlines. Now, its death has caused outrage among the public. A team sent to capture the animal, which is native to Africa, says it discovered and treated serious injuries. The team and local officials say the animal later died on the way to nearby safari park, Liofu Village, for specialist care. But photos and videos appear to show team members stopping work to pose with the unconscious animal. That's raised questions about how urgently they sought help. There's also the question of what injured the baboon. A hunter has come forward claiming to have shot the animal. He says he had permission, but from officials in a neighboring county. Police and local officials are investigating this claim. Taipei Zoo will now take charge of the case. It hopes to solve the mystery of where the baboon came from. And with an autopsy starting Tuesday to uncover the real cause of the animal's death. Alex Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Honduras has ordered Taiwan to vacate its embassy in the country within 30 days. The order was issued on Honduran television on Monday by Deputy Foreign Minister Antonio Garcia. Garcia said 30 days was more than enough time to pack up and leave. He also said Honduras hopes for a, quote, friendly exit. Taiwan and Honduras ended their decades-long diplomatic relationship over the weekend after Honduras decided to establish official ties with China. The move leaves Taiwan with just 13 diplomatic allies, mostly in Latin America and the Caribbean. After Taiwan and Honduras broke off diplomatic relations on Sunday, lawmakers have begun discussing the idea of dual recognition. That would mean countries could have official ties with both Taiwan and China, Bing Wang reports. This is where the Honduran flag used to fly in what two days ago was their embassy in Taiwan. But the Central American country ended its decades-long relationship with Taiwan and switched diplomatic recognition to China. According to Taiwanese officials, Honduras switched ties because Taiwan refused to compete with China in checkbook diplomacy. The governments in Beijing and Taipei each claim to represent all of China, and neither allows for international recognition of the other. This means members of the international community can only recognize either China or Taiwan. The severing of ties with Honduras has ignited a debate on whether Taiwan should change its approach to diplomacy to allow for dual recognition. In the last seven years of President Tsai Ing-wen's term, nine countries have broken off ties with Taiwan, leaving Taipei with only 13 diplomatic allies. Foreign Minister Joseph Wu says Taiwan still has other means to build relations. Now, 
啊文化的关系的话，那我们都啊会认真的来思考。啊，来演绎看用什么样的这个方式，能够让我们的国际空间，或者是让我们的经贸空空间，能够更加的扩大。Wang Dingyu, a legislator from the ruling Democratic Progressive Party or DPP, welcomed the idea of dual recognition. 我们都乐于接受，也会扬弃过去那种汉贼不两立啊的外交策略。But Johnny Chang, former chair of the opposition Kuomintang or KMT, wasn't as optimistic. 要做到所谓的双重承认是有它的困难度的，因为这涉及到两个中国的问题以及一中一台的问题。China claims Taiwan as part of its own territory and has not ruled out the use of force to take the country. There are concerns that Beijing could view dual recognition as an undermining of its belief that it rules over Taiwan, and this might come with repercussions. When Lithuania allowed Taiwan to open a representative office using the label Taiwanese, China downgraded its ties with Lithuania. Other countries without formal relations use the label Taipei instead. Scholars say Taiwan must maintain close dialogue with China to reassure Beijing that dual recognition does not mean Taiwanese independence. To now, for 70 years, you have not been the Chinese Communist Party. So I think that this part, I think, we need to talk about it clearly. If we are with the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese Communist Party will inevitably cause war. I think that is not necessary. Because this thing, although it is a separate thing, it is a separate thing. 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 Far from seeking independence, officials here are working to establish any kind of ties with countries around the world, hoping this would give Taipei more of a say among the international community, regardless of China's opposition. Patrick Chen and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. The visiting Czech legislative speaker says her country stands together with Taiwan. Marketa Pekarova Adamova addressed Taiwan's legislature on Tuesday, where she was awarded a Medal of Honor. The Speaker of the Czech Parliament's lower house is leading a delegation of over 150 people to Taiwan, mostly business people. Taiwan has been strengthening its relations with several Central and Eastern European countries as it comes under increasing Chinese pressure. China has objected to Adamova's trip. She told lawmakers that the Czech Republic and Taiwan are bound together by democracy and freedom. I am on this place. Vážené kolegyně, vážení kolegové, milí tajvanský lidé, vás chtěla ubezpečit, že jsme s vámi už nyní a budeme s vámi i nadále za všech okolností, protože vy jste s námi, my jsme s vámi. Ties between Taiwan and Lithuania have been growing rapidly since 2020. The warming relations have made headlines in Taiwan, but is Taiwan met with the same excitement in Lithuania? Leslie Liao spoke to two Taiwanese people living in Vilnius to get a first-hand impression. Taiwan and Lithuania have been growing closer since 2020 when both countries committed to establishing representative offices in each other's territory. But for Lala Yo and Julie Zhu, two Taiwanese women living in Lithuania, bridging the gap between the two partners began long before that. My husband is a Lithuanian, so I met him more than 10 years ago back in Taiwan. We were ex-colleague. And after we got married, we have the first baby. He decided that Lithuania is the better place to, to like, live and for longer time, so we moved back here. I met my Lithuanian partner back in 2017. Um, and eventually I found a job here and I decided to move here. A year turned into two and I stayed on till now. It's been five years. Lila and Julie experienced firsthand the effects of Taiwan's growing ties with Lithuania. And they've noticed changes in how the two countries perceive each other. They're definitely better awareness now about Taiwan and I think vice versa in Taiwan as well. Like we hear more about each other. Um, in general, you know, they, they got to think about, you know, the similarities perhaps in our history, in our polit uh, political situation with our neighbors um, and things like that. The two say news about Taiwan is important to Lithuanians. Recently, this uh, semiconductor production corporation, this is, I see it's really big news because Mm, for ge pu general public, they were waiting for that. They know, okay, why we are pissing China off and uh, what can we get? So this news comes up and uh, I, I see that people are reacting. Yes, it's, it's good and it's the right thing to do. 
Both women are optimistic about Taiwan and Lithuania's relationship moving forward. I think it would just be better and also I believe that Lithuania is just the first country in Europe doing that. It's now you can see like Latvia, Estonia and also other European countries they, they do that. So I think it would just get better. It's sort of mm, taking off in a good way. And of course I'm happy to see it go well uh, as a lasting and um, mutually beneficial, let's say, friendship uh, as such. Lila recently received permanent residency in Lithuania, a process that required her to learn the local language. Julie is pursuing a PhD in Vilnius and often interacts with Lithuanian people. Their positive experiences as Taiwanese in Lithuania show just how close the two countries have become. Lian Lian and Leslie Liao in Vilnius, Lithuania for Taiwan Plus. Former Taiwan President Ma ying visited the Sun Yat-sen Mausoleum in Nanjing on the second day of his trip to China. Ma is the first former or current leader of Taiwan to ever travel to the country. The visit comes as tensions between the two countries grow. It drew criticism from the ruling Democratic Progressive Party. At the mausoleum, Ma praised Sun, who is considered a founding father of modern China. Ma also emphasized the shared ethnicity between China and Taiwan. A recent survey has revealed the mental health of Taiwan's young people is getting worse. Researchers say a lack of home support and resources could be aggravating the issue. John Van Trias looks at the issue and spoke to a medical professional to find out what could be done to help. 17% of Taiwan's teens are depressed. By high school, 23% will have depression. These are just some of the results from a new survey of Taiwanese teenagers' mental health. The Child Welfare League Foundation, the group behind the study, says signs of poor mental health are extremely concerning. From 15 years old into early adulthood, suicide is Taiwan's second leading killer. 忧郁的感觉的话，跟以往相比，真的有增加一些些，因为以往大概就是一成左右。The group surveyed over 1,800 students aged 12 to 17. The survey included a questionnaire called DAS 21. That's short for Depression, Anxiety, and Stress Scale 21 Questions. It's important to note that this isn't the same as a formal diagnosis, but it does shed light on how young people are feeling. What are teenagers depressed about? Schoolwork is at the top of the list. Academic performance is hugely important for school children in Taiwan, and it's common for teens to have extra tutoring late into the evening. But there are more universal teen concerns too. 然后还有四成三左右是，就是交友跟人际关系，因为他们这个时候是青春期，都会寻求同才的认同。What do mental health professionals make of this survey? Does Taiwan have a mental health problem, or are teenagers everywhere depressed because of the stresses and challenges that come at their age? I think it really depends on uh, varied uh, across the countries, and uh, but it's similar figure. Yeah, particular you know, uh, adolescents have a higher uh, prevalence of some uh, stress or anxiety, depression than the uh, school aged children, and I think this figure is uh, similar to uh, Western countries. But it seems traditional ways of thinking can make it hard for people, especially young people, to seek help. I think our culture is not easy to express our mood status. Uh, I'm, I'm anxious, I'm depressed, uh, I, I have some pressure from uh, the school or the parents. They may try to suppress their, their feeling. And finding a specialist in that age group can be tough. Some hospital may not want to have, uh, you know, child psychiatrists because they cannot really earn the profit for the hospital. 
But while youth psychiatrists feel there are problems and more can be done, they also say awareness, infrastructure, and a willingness to get kids help are all on the rise. And they say that if schools can find students that need help early on, the situation can get better. Eason Chen and John Vientriest for Taiwan Plus. Join us again tomorrow for an in-depth look at how Taiwan's young people view mental health and how Taiwan can better help young people in need of help. An exhibition featuring over 100 photos of the late Japanese Prime Minister Abe Shinzo has opened in Taiwan. Abe's legacy and friendship with Taiwan is being commemorated at the ex exhibit, Joyce Sung reports. Photos of a smiling Abe Shinzo cover the walls. This exhibition of the late Abe displays over 150 photos and opened in Taipei on Monday. Abe was Japan's longest serving prime minister. He died in July last year after being shot twice at a campaign rally in the Japanese city of Nara. He was well known in Taiwan for his support for the country despite Tokyo and Taipei lacking official diplomatic ties. Speaking at the opening of the exhibit, Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen commented on Abe's efforts to improve Taiwan-Japan relations. Abe served as Japan's Prime Minister from 2007 to 2008 and again from 2012 to 2020. During his tenure, Abe strengthened Taiwan-Japan ties in several ways, including resuming direct flights between Taipei International Airport and Tokyo's Haneda Airport. Another notable achievement was a fishing agreement signed in 2013. This accord allowed Taiwanese fishermen to operate free from intervention in contested waters between China, Japan and Taiwan. Even after he left office, Abe used his influence to support Taiwan during the COVID-19 pandemic. He supported Japan donating vaccines to Taiwan and also publicly praised Taiwanese produce after China banned imports on certain foods from Taiwan. Many of Abe's successors have continued what he started and have become increasingly outspoken about their support for Taiwan. The photo exhibit on the life and work of Abe Shinzo first showed in Tokyo last November. For its display in Taipei, Abe's widow added 30 additional photos to the collection. This is the first time the public has been able to view these photos, and the exhibit aims to give visitors a glimpse into the former PM's daily life. Abe worked hard to improve Taiwan-Japan relations, and for people in Taiwan, his dedication to that friendship is not easily forgotten. Eason Pan and Joyce Zen for Taiwan Plus. Coming up, using virtual reality to teach surgeons. Find out how after the break. In a changing world, when voices are being silenced, Taiwan Plus is listening. We tell those stories. No compromise, no boundaries, no fear. Oh, I'm Ryan Hill-Kilpatrick, it's capital Taipei, Taiwan Plus. Taiwan Plus News. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. North Korea has unveiled upgraded nuclear warheads. Photos released by Pyongyang's state news agency on Tuesday showed leader Kim Jong-un visiting the country's nuclear weapons institute. Experts believe Kim has ordered the North Korean military to develop warheads that are powerful but small enough to mount on intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of striking the U.S. North Korean state media says Kim has ordered the production of more weapons-grade nuclear materials. It says the country will use these to boost its nuclear arsenal exponentially and produce more powerful weapons. 
An advanced U.S. aircraft carrier arrived at the port of Busan in South Korea on Tuesday. It's the first time the nuclear-powered USS Nimitz has docked in South Korea in six years. The vessel is taking part in a joint military exercise between the U.S. and South Korea this month. North Korea fired two short-range ballistic missiles on Monday to protest the aircraft carrier's participation in amphibious landing drills. Those took place off the coast of the South Korean island of Jeju. As post-pandemic travel picks up, an iconic beach in Thailand is facing a conservation dilemma. The famous Maya Bay has been closed for four years to allow marine life to recover from years of human-caused damage. But the country's need for tourism revenue is demanding new solutions. Joyce Sung reports. You may recognize this view from travel brochures or perhaps the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Beach, from the early 2000s. This is Maya Bay, one of Thailand's most iconic beaches, located in one of the two main PP islands off the country's southeastern coast. But for nearly four years, the globally popular getaway saw no visitors. In 2018, the beach was closed off because of the extensive environmental damage caused by crowds of tourists. Over 80 percent of the beach's coral was destroyed by pollution from litter, boats and sunscreen. The bay's shark population also took a huge hit, disrupting the area's marine ecosystem. And with the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic, Maya Bay's hiatus became indefinite. But for the sharks, this was a golden time for recovery. We have counted the highest amount of black tip reef shark, which is uh, 161 shark at uh, a given time, and that is in November 2021. Black tip reef shark is important for the ecosystem because it helped maintain uh, the balance of the, eco the coral reef ecosystem. Uh, black tip reef shark is a top predator, so uh, they eat other sick and unwell uh, animals and keep the population healthy as well as control the population of other animals. The decision to close Maya Bay was a significant one considering how much international tourism contributes to the Thai economy. Pre-COVID, tourism revenue accounted for over 10 percent of the country's GDP. At the peak of its popularity, Maya Bay alone brought in 5,000 beachgoers and 200 boats a day, which translated to almost 19 million U.S. dollars a year. And now that international travel has resumed, the country has been under pressure to heal its economy from the heavy blow dealt by pandemic restrictions. This includes Maya Bay, which reopened in January 2022, but this time with new rules. Visitors today are only allowed to venture knee-deep into the water, with numbers also capped per hour. Yeah, I was thinking like about that uh, just because, yeah, they have to save it. If we would let people go, so it, we will destroy it definitely. So I, I really appreciate the, the way that they close the beach for the swimming, probably just because to save the nature. Boats now also dock on the other side of the island and visitors must walk to the beach. If you can create and come up with the new image of Maya Bay as a nature reserve, as a strict nature reserve for shark, I think that it's actually going to bring new um, uh, tourism scheme as well, and uh, we're going to benefit from that overall. So we don't talk about you know closing everywhere or reducing the tourism number, but I think we're talking about managing it uh, wisely. The Maya Bay Shark Watch Project continues to use underwater cameras and drones to monitor the shark population. Though they have already seen a drop in numbers since reopening, they are determined to find a way for tourists to coexist with the environment. As travelers return to Thailand, which is known as the Land of Smiles, the revised vision for Maya Bay hopes to keep tourists, locals and the sharks happy. Ricky and Joyce Tsen for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan is working to boost its healthcare quality and attract overseas talent. One of the latest initiatives to achieve this is the country's first world-class surgical training center, which recently opened in northern Taiwan. Our reporter Sandy Chi has more. This is the Surgical Skills Training and Research Center. It opened its doors earlier this month at Chang'e Memorial Hospital in Taoyuan. A first of its kind for Taiwan. The facility is designed for the hospital's leading surgeons to provide training for doctors and medical students. 
The center cost around 22 million US dollars to build. It houses 24 operating tables, lecture rooms and rest areas, and the latest medical instruments and equipment. Planning for the center began two years ago. The goal was to boost healthcare quality in Taiwan and attract medical students from around the world. Students and practitioners from over 22 countries are expected to attend lessons here. Part of the training will include the use of virtual reality devices that simulate real-life surgical procedures. With this new center, Taiwan hopes to make it mark in the medical world, not just for patients, but for doctors too. Andy Xue and Sandy Chi for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan has won big at this year's Delmain World Marmalade Awards in the UK, snapping up around 20 medals. Nanto-based jam maker Loas Edible Rose Garden were crowned the double gold savory winner for their orange marmalade infused with local Jimin liquor, Gaolian. It's one of the competition's most prestigious prizes. The winning products will be featured at London's iconic department store, Fortnum and Mason. Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. Finally today, we leave you with images of hundreds of deer at a farm in Lebanon. I'm Ian Kravat. Take care and see you next time.